Yes, my name is Omar Sidney Slatin. I'm a geography student in the Department of Geography and the Environment. And a lot of my research and work that I do normally uh, evolves around geographic information systems, so GIS, remote sensing, and modeling the environment. And um, so now whenever you see my title of my talk, you might be thinking, why is this a solar power, uh, so, so, uh, solar power potential at UC campus? Well, because I'm using the same kind of modeling techniques that I use with, uh, with GIS. So whenever I came across the, my big question, what's the solar potential of UT campus, the first thing I thought about was I'm going to approach this as a geographer using GIS remote sensing. And the thing that I wanted to do was translate these nice maps that I always see of a general solar potential, this is done by the Weber Group here on campus, to something that will translate to the, to the campus level to see if solar power, solar potential on individual buildings makes sense. So um, I'm not like, you know, introducing a new concept. Actually, UT is very uh, proactive at developing uh, solar potential on campus new buildings like we were talking about earlier with the LEED certification. Um, a, a good way to get points is to add uh, renewable energy on site. So the building like we're in right now, Student Activity Center, actually uses solar uh, energy for thermal. Um, and then other buildings on campus like the biology building, also uh, the Norman Hackman building also has uh, solar thermal. But solar photovoltaics have been something that's been a little bit more of a challenge to bring to campus. And that's, that's kind of the, the interesting thing if we can generate electricity at the, at the building level. That would be really huge. Um, right now we have a solar photovoltaic a system that's just being installed at the, at the uh, parking garage, Maynard parking garage uh, next to the uh, UT football uh, stadium. But additionally we have off-siting of our solar, our solar photovoltaic at the Pickle Research Center where we have the biggest, the biggest uh, field. So um, the thing that I'm interested in though is that, okay, we have a plan for new buildings. We have a plan kind of in general how to develop, but what are we gonna do about our existing buildings? And that's what I wanted to see is, can we harness this, the solar radiation that hits the rooftops of our existing buildings every day uh, by installing systems on the rooftops? But whenever you start talking about putting solar panels on UT roofs, you always hit the big social barrier of, well, we don't want to cover up these beautiful red roofs that we have. And the one little issue that we have there is that the slanted roofs are going to be the cheapest places and the most potential to install. So limiting to only flat roofs kind of works in some caveats. So I took that into account with my model development. Um, another issue is the economic barriers. So um, right now, UT generates its own electricity through its natural uh, gas uh, power plant. And it is a very highly efficient, uh, some could say pretty green uh, power system, which produces electricity very cheap. And that's putting a solar panel system in that competes with something that you can produce at 7 cents per kilowatt hour is really hard. So that's an economic barrier. So we have two major barriers that are kind of blocking, blocking uh, solar development on UT campus. So now to switch to my modeling. <laughs> so uh, whenever uh, I was going to approach this problem, I started thinking, well, I'm going to treat this like how we normally uh, do elevation models in GIS. So whenever you want to model flooding or even vegetation distribution, which is what I do a lot of work on, um, we use something called uh, light detection and ranging, LIDAR. So uh, the basic idea is that you have these airplanes that fly over and do 3D scans of the Earth's surface. And this is... Um, they started incorporating this in a lot with the aerial photography that you guys are seeing on Google Earth, so you kind of get an idea of how often it's done, usually like uh, every few years. So what I did was I took this raw data of these 3D, uh, this 3D scan, and here you can see an example of it. And um, this is, uh, this is a, a, a elevation model of just the raw data, how it comes. So I took this, and I, I did kind of opposite of what I normally do. Normally I would put... Uh, break lines around uh, buildings, I would try to filter out trees, and I would just try to make a bare earth elevation model of the ground. Well, instead of that, I kind of flipped it the other way, took out the trees, but only extracted out the buildings and made a digital roof elevation model. So the idea is now I know, it's like I went with a GPS unit on top of every building and measured slopes and pitches and angles towards the sun, um, which you can use later to do a calculation of how much solar radiation hits that rooftop. So 
making this, this base map of solar radiation hitting, a, hitting the rooftops of UT campus, you kind of see what you're working with on how much sun hits, hits our building tops. And what, what, like these are all uh, raw radiation numbers. So what you want to do is take these, num these numbers that we're getting here, like the 2,000 gigawatt hours per year, and then multiply it by some kind of efficiency of conversion from radiation to electricity. Um, one interesting result that I found, though, was that while the total roof space in UT campus, is, is, there's a lot, lot of potential there, even whenever I filter out just for only flat roofs, we still have a pretty good potential in the radiation that's hitting the flat roofs. And then, so that's something that we can think about trying to take advantage of. So I was like, well, start feeling optimistic and good. So let's start modeling this. So I was like, um, what, what, what buildings will we put a solar photovoltaic system on? Well, we're not going to put one on, for example, Little Field House. The historic buildings, a tower, I don't think it's going to be a really cool place to have, a, to have a PV system. So I filtered out buildings that had either roof space that's being used or if the building had some kind of cultural significance. And I came up with 109 main campus buildings. And uh, I took the assumption that we can get 12% efficiency uh, fairly cheaply. And I made a breakpoint analysis. So what I did is I compared how much money we would save through our electric bills to how much it costs to, to put solar panels in. And in general, it just didn't make economic sense yet. <laughs> so what the results came out was that we need to subsidize nearly about 80% of the, the solar panel, if we want to do pho photovoltaics on campus. Um, you can see here, like PCL, for example, uh, just to explain this map, the green is like a pretty, like the, the better spots, the reds are not as good as spots. Um, and you can see here, uh, uh, the price there that you're seeing is actually a yearly annual return per square meter. I did everything by, uh, by area calculations. So if you were to say, take that, you know, long view, like President Powers was talking about earlier, you can take that number and multiply it by 20 for example, to get, a, to get a good idea. The good news is that solar panels uh, prices are dropping. And in the future, we will be able to, to utilize that, utilize that with these kind of base maps. Okay, thank you. <laughs>